As I mentioned, I wanted to base my design on the Pelagic 77. So what I did was I googled the phrase Pelagic 77 plan. And then in Google, I found a bunch of images of sort of technical drawings of the boat. This one is actually a rendering, um, kind of showing it against that Arctic background for which it was intended. And this one shows various uh, top and the side view as well. What I'm not getting here is uh, what's happening below the waterline, so that's going to be left a little bit to my imagination. I can base kind of what I'm seeing on some prior knowledge of other sailboats and how they look underneath the waterline. Um, we can compare these to other models, which I will show you how to do. As you can see, uh, this is a catch rigged sailboat, meaning it has two masts, both of them forward of the rudder, which would be probably right about here. Um, and what I want to do is I want to basically kind of copy this as the basis for my design, uh, bearing in mind that um, my boat is going to have certain other features on it that will allow it to do special things, for example, uh, perhaps a space um, on deck where uh, animals can be resuscitated or cared for uh, without having to put them in the uncomfortable environment of the inside of the boat. Another thing that I want to do is I want to convert this from a catch to a sloop, meaning I want to go from two masts to one mast. The reason I want it to have one mast instead of two is because in this harsh Arctic environment, I want to minimize the amount of outside maintenance and work that has to go on in order to maintain and uh, control the sails. So I will be converting this to a sloop, uh, probably starting with this picture here. What I can do is I can, I can take my paper and kind of work from observation. That's one way to do it. If you are able to print out something, or if you, uh, if you have a printer or access to a printer, you can print out whatever plans you find for your boat. And again, there's a lot of resources that are posted in the classroom for you to look for boat plans um, for the boats that you are kind of basing your designs off of. Once you've done that, you can actually trace them. Um, I've got a uh, light box. I can start with my big side view. And I'll take my plan here. And one thing I want to do actually is possibly scale this down so that my uh, so that my side and top views are uh, contained within the same alignment. And remember, uh, this has to be formatted correctly according to those specifications. So actually, the first thing I want to do is format my technical drawing. This one is going to be in vertical orientation because of the shape of my plans. So I'm going to, again, do that half inch border and title bar, but this time the title bar is going to be on the top rather than uh, on the long side. Now I've got my drawing nicely set up and formatted. I'm going to go ahead and uh, fill in the title bar. Remember to make your guidelines. And after I write boat design final, I might want to actually add the name of my boat up here. So I'm going to try to use my brain to remember to do that. No guarantees. Uh, I'm a very forgetful person. There's a good likelihood that I'll forget to do this. But you won't because you have a much younger and healthier brain than I do. So now that I've formatted my drawing, I'm going to go ahead and get ready to use this as a basis for tracing. You can also work right off of your computer screen if that's one way that you want to do it. Um, one thing that I want to do with this is I don't want to lay out my technical drawing like this. I only need a side and a top view and I think I'm going to take the exteriors because, uh, well, I might include one interior view as well. Um, but I don't need to do all four of these. So what I want to do is I want to think about how I'm laying out my drawing. And a lot of uh, technical drawings are laid out sort of like this, where you have um, the boat kind of seen from the side, like this. And then you might have a 
So that's your boat from the side. And then you would have those drop down lines to make it clear that you're, uh, you're drawing something that's the, the consistent scale. But in some boat plans, what they'll actually do is they'll save space by, let's say this is your drawing. What they'll do is they'll have the, um, actually I forgot to do the keel there. Uh, they'll have the boat down here like this. And then because there isn't a lot going on here in the middle of the sail area, they'll actually put the top view like that. And what that does is it saves space in your drawing. So where this is the height of the boat plus the width of the boat plus some space to make it cleaner, this is the height of the boat with the width of the boat in it. Because there's just not a lot going on here in the side view, uh, you can put the top view right over it, and it looks nice. It's a, it's a kind of a clean way of expressing the idea of uh, the different views of the boat. Um, you will also often find a front view or a rear view, uh, and in that case, sometimes what boat designers will do, they'll only give you half, because there's an assumption that the boat is symmetrical when you look at it from the front. Uh, so you could do just a half of a front view or the whole front view, which uh, would probably look something like this, right? Um, and again, you would want to probably line that up with your side view. So actually it would be somewhere down here like this. So everything is lined up. Um, and that's pretty much how you would lay out a technical drawing for a boat. Of course, if you don't have a sailboat, you have something that doesn't have all this space up here, uh, you have a lot more room to work with. So uh, with that in mind, I want to take this side view and place it kind of toward the bottom of my drawing. Because I think what I want to do is I want to place the top view kind of up in that sail area just to be super efficient with my space. Um, and I think that the mast is going to come roughly to here. I have to kind of check on the ratio of mast to, uh, yeah, something like that. So if this, if this scale is a little bit bigger than that one, and this mast comes all the way up to here, probably my mast is going to come to like there. Uh, and that's, whoops, hang on. That is, uh, I'll turn the light off so you can see. That's right there on my technical drawing. Something like that. So we can turn it back on. Hey, it works. And I will go ahead and just go ahead and trace. And again, you can trace, you can work from observation, but remember to make the modification from your reference to your actual boat. Typically, the keel is located underneath the mast. So I want, uh, if I'm going to move my, if I'm, I'm making the conversion to one mast, so I'm probably going to kind of split the difference in terms of where the masts are. I'll probably push forward a little bit to like there. So this is where I want my new mast location to be. So my keel should be somewhere right under there. And again, this is something that you would know just by kind of looking at a lot of sailboats and uh, getting a sense of, how they are designed. But otherwise, I pretty much want to keep this intact. So I really like this boat and I love the lines on it. This is going to work nicely for me. This part back here is called the arch. That is a uh, kind of fitting on the rear, on the aft end of the boat where you can uh, place navigational and electronic equipment as well as hang your tender. Super important. Got to have a good place to do that.
There's my boot top. Here's my water line. You are required to put the water line in the side view. This stripe up here is called the cove stripe, which really just has the function of looking nice. So that leaves the sail pretty much. And uh, one thing I can do is, let's take a look at that so far. I can kind of scale, scale this down by eye a little bit, but what I'll do is I'll line up these sails with the boat that I've drawn. and just kind of bearing in mind that it's going to be a little bit shorter. So instead of coming all the way up to here, uh, it's going to come maybe to there. And if I've lined up my boat correctly, actually I can line up the water line. So there's the water line right there. Just move that over. First I want to put in the mast, there's a little winch on it right there. And now I'm going to put in the boom. The boom is this uh, kind of horizontal spar that sticks out uh, which supports the mainsail, the mainsail. Um, and because I'm doing a sloop, I want this to be a little bit longer of a boom, just like that. And pretty much uh, you're going to get a kind of a line from here to here. As you can see, it doesn't connect quite to the top of the mast, so I want to kind of do this. The Pelagic 77 is kind of triple cutter rigged, meaning that it has three head sails, as you can see. One, two, three. Uh, I'm only going to do two head sails. I'm going to do a kind of a traditional cutter rig. And again, this is something that you would just pick up by looking at a lot of boats and getting interested in them. Um, I can actually use my straight edge here to make sure that I'm getting a good line on those forward shrouds. So there's one like that. And the other one should go roughly parallel to it. right under the deck there. <clears throat> um, and I want to be sure that I am including kind of the line of where the sails go. It's going to show with a maybe 130% Genoa. Just sailing stuff. And the rest is all just putting in uh, stays and shrouds and things like that. Uh, this would be the back stay, which is a kind of a support cable that holds the mast in place or supports the mast. And that's going to run pretty much to there. The forward stay is uh, kind of paired with the, the head sail support here. And then the shrouds kind of come up to the side. I'm going to put a set of spanners here like that and another set of spreaders here like that. And those spreaders actually also support the, the mast and they go more vertically. So I've got my side view and I have to get ready to kind of erase some of it as I add the, um, the top view. So this is what it looks like so far. And now my top view, I want to make sure it's aligned. So I'm actually using this other top view to line up the top view that I want to use, which is this center one here. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. 
And this is where I'm really going to start to concentrate on my deck equipment. This is the thing that's going to distinguish my boat from the actual Pelagic 77. I really think I'm butchering that name. There's my bowsprit, which we'll telescope out. Um, and it looks like they've got uh, some other equipment here on deck. I didn't include it, but there's another um, tender here. And look, they give me the spreaders here, so I can actually kind of steal that. Because I know it's going to be kind of in place right here. So, where am I? Okay, I've got my swim step here. Radar, tender. Up on davits off of the uh, off the arch there, and you guys, I'm just totally geeking out about this stuff. I don't expect you to geek out quite as much, but you know, for reasons that we've kind of gone over together, um, boats are super interesting and super important in terms of you know how they've kind of helped to shape uh, our human existence, and so they're kind of worth geeking out about a little bit. If that makes sense. Here's one component I want to keep is this nice kind of pilot house. And here's where I want to do my kind of like animal rescue work. So I'm going to have a nice big table set up here, uh, maybe a, a scale or something like that right behind the cockpit. And, uh, you know, lots of equipment for dealing with rescued animals. Um, I'll add some lockers here for that. Let's say that's a locker. And then I want to kind of go back into my side view and make sure that those things are visible as well. I'm going to add a kind of a work light. that comes out from here. Fantastic. Let's turn this off and see what it looks like. So I've got some erasing to do. I can kind of get rid of a lot of these things that are kind of cutting through my top view now. Just keep what I need. Now, as I said, I am looking for uh, a single dimension on my plan view. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the overall length. And we said this was 77 feet. I'm going to drop it down to a nice even 75 feet. You can use a single uh, quote mark or write FT for feet. Um, so this is now a 75 foot sloop, which uh, is used for uh, kind of rescuing and caring for animals in the Arctic. And let's see, I think we called it Southern Stars. And uh, I don't really love that name actually, so I'm going to name my boat something else. Uh, maybe I will call it um, the Penguin. I'm going to put that in quotes here. And maybe on the, on the bow I'll have a little drawing of a, a penguin or something. Like that. So that's my technical drawing. I'm going to take a photograph of this and I'm going to put it into my slide presentation after the part where I discuss kind of the history and, uh, and um, background of the type of boat that I am designing.